Hello, governors. What's going on guys? This is Chris and Jess back with another video. I got my girlfriend here and she's going to help us prepare these back straps from the pig that I recently cleaned in one of my previous videos. If you haven't checked that video out, make sure you do. Link will be down in the description box below. She is a master chef, so we're going to give you a rundown of the ingredients that we're using and how we're going to prepare this back strap. Let's go. All right, so first things first, we got all the ingredients laid out here, and what we're going to be doing is actually making a glaze for the back strap. So what we got, we got some light brown sugar, garlic, onion, ginger, uh, honey. We got some olive oil to bring it together, and of course, we got our soy sauce, and then we got some salt and pepper here that we're going to be using at the end. So let's go ahead and uh, start making this glaze, babe. Now, I don't have any measurements. Uh, We're eyeballing it. Our first thing is our brown sugar. About that much. It's probably a quarter cup somewhere around there. We'll do some honey. Probably just a couple tablespoons. Soy sauce, probably a quarter of a cup to half a cup. This is reduced sodium, so I can add more without getting a super strong sodium taste. My garlic. So we did actually pre-chop these garlic uh, and onion up before we started recording. The ginger. Mm. Olive oil. Mm. All right, so you're gonna wanna go ahead and whisk up your glaze. Make sure it gets nice and mixed. Now for the onions, we're going to go ahead and set those aside. These are going to be laying over the back strap while they get baked or all around the back strap. So go ahead, slide those to the side. Bring in the star of the video, the back strap. All right, so our back strap has actually been sitting in the cooler now for about a little over 48 hours. That's preference. I saw most people would recommend that. Like I said in my uh, video, learn that from Tom. He said that it'll take out a lot of the gaminess in the meat. Luckily, this pig was uh, corn fed for probably the past three weeks. So she should taste actually pretty good. But they're, they've been sitting out now for about two hours to three hours. So they're completely soft. So we're going to go ahead and pat them dry. According to my master chef, we're basically wanting to pat them completely dry. Get them as dry as possible. Once they're packed completely dry, they're gonna take that glaze that we mixed up a second ago a lot better. The meat has gotten so tender now that it's been out of the cooler. When I first took them out of the cooler, I was concerned because they were pretty, uh, pretty hardy, but they were practically frozen. All right, so what we're gonna do now is actually remove these fatty layers. You can see on this side too, this is all the fat where the skin actually sits on the meat. So you can, you can almost peel it off. It sticks on there pretty good. So we got one piece of fat. That was a good, good piece of fat there came off. All right, now that we got most of that fat off, Jessica's gonna come in here, clean these up, all the, the rest of the fat and any of the parts that she doesn't think deserve to be on these, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and apply our glaze. Just so you know, this is the first time we are cooking wild game, so a learning curve it's a little bit different the, thus far in my experience it's just just a little bit different the meat looks a little different you know it's not from it's not store-bought so it looks worse than it is uh, at least right now we'll see it with the end result but uh, now we're gonna go ahead put it in our pan get a glaze going put our onions around it and uh, we should be able to pop it in the oven right yeah okay so we're gonna lay them in fat side down first, just so we can go ahead and glaze them. Because we're gonna cook them fat side up so that fat melts down into it and then at the 
and we're gonna broil it and get the fat really crispy. Why didn't we marinate it, babe? Why didn't we? Because we didn't have time. <laughs> you don't have to marinate things. You don't have to marinate things? No, if you're gonna cook it really long like this and the meat's so small, you really don't need to marinate it. So our cook time, we're cooking it at 325 and we're gonna cook it for four to six hours, just depending on when it's done. Just wanna check it with your meat thermometer. Crack some pepper. Sea salt. All right, so we already preheated our oven, 325. We got our back straps wrapped in the tin foil, the glaze, the onions. How long are we putting it in there? We're gonna go four hours and check it. Make sure you cook your wild game all the way through. Get you a meat thermometer so you know. Do you know the temperature is supposed to be at? Nope. We don't know the temperature that it's supposed to be at yet, but we will find that out. <laughs> Check I, the subtitle. I assure you, because we are not eating this with it not being cooked all the way through. You risk getting sick, so very important. So we're gonna go ahead. Ooh. The pan, the thing collapsed on me there. We're gonna go ahead and pop it in the oven. Now we're gonna let her sit for probably four hours, check it, and uh, we'll keep you guys up to date. Okay, so since we have so much glaze left over, I've decided to actually turn it into a sauce to pour over it at the end. All right, so I'm literally just gonna pour it into a pot. If you wanted to actually do this yourself, like just make more glaze and have it at about like medium heat. I'm just gonna let it slowly come up since I'm not in a rush. I'll let it cook a lot longer than usual. And you're just gonna cook it until it gets thick. All right, so here we are three hours later. We decided to cut it a little bit short. We checked it around the three hour mark. Our back straps were a little bit thinner, you know, smaller pig. And we had a little bit of shrinkage here on the back straps, as you could tell. They did fill up the entire pan. Now they're a little bit smaller, but pork's internal temperature is supposed to be 160 degrees. So when you put it in there, you guys can see it climbs pretty quickly. And we easily hit 160 degrees. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw it in the oven on the broil setting to crisp the outside up. All right, so that is gonna complete the cook portion. We already drizzled our glaze on there. Check it out. As you guys can see, looks pretty appetizing. Keep in mind, this is our first time cooking any type of wild game. Uh, so we actually went over our cook temperature just a little bit. So it's probably gonna be on the drier side, but that's all right. I'm gonna go ahead, take a nice big piece here. Check that out. Looks pretty good. Do you want to cheers it? Cheers. Mm. It's very good. Little on the drier side, so more chewy. Give me a second to chew this up. <laughs> and then I'll, I probably should have bit it a little smaller. I'm not gonna lie. It's actually a lot better than I expected it to be. Like I'm being a hundred percent honest with you guys. You dip it in that glaze, or you know, spread the glaze around it. That's what uh, I feel like. That's what really brings the flavor out. the The recipe was on point. What do you think, babe? I think it was pretty good. I think it was pretty good. Yeah. Hey, if you guys want to try this recipe on some, you know domesticated pig or wild game in the description box below I'm gonna have everything that we did so it'll be all laid out I hope you guys enjoyed this video a little hunt and cook and if you haven't watched the hunt go check it out do it smash that like button it really helps a brother out comment down below have you guys ever eaten wild game and if you have what was your recipe if you guys made it this far in the video and you haven't subscribed yet I don't know what you're doing subscribe peace